So as stated, my name is Greg Chipman. Um, I've come over from Grand Junction, St. Mary's Medical Center there. Um, so if any, is anyone here from the Western Slope? So it's good that we have some, the Western Slope represented over here then. Um, in Grand Junction, we're St. Mary's, we have a, a robust program. So if anybody ever uh, needs an oncologist on the Western Slope, we have seven medical oncologists. That's enough to be able to do some subspecializing. So I do most of the genitourinary pathology, or uh, oncology, prostate, kidney, bladder cancer. Some of my presentation today was just pirated by Larry. Uh, so some of it will be a review. And looking at some of the, some of the other presentations, there are some re um, repetition as well, a little bit. So this is Bladder Cancer 101, and it li really is Bladder Cancer 101. It's probably going to be a review for a lot of you. Um, who probably know a lot, and I'm honored to be able to, um, to be asked to speak today because in reality I'm deeply in love with the sound of my own voice, and so I, I, I'm always happy to talk. Um, so let's talk about bladder cancer. We're going to talk about bladder cancer by the numbers. First we're going to talk about cancer numbers in general, and then some specific bladder cancer numbers, which will be a review of what Larry just went through. We're going to review the anatomy <coughs> of the general urinary tract, so as we go, th hopefully as you go through today and a lot of, um, of the different speakers, we can um, remember uh, what we're dealing with. We're going to talk about how to diagnose bladder cancer, staging, and then a, a few more minor issues. So let's talk about cancer by the numbers. <clears throat> this is cancer in general. About 11.7 million Americans right now are alive with a history of cancer. Um, probably a little more that these numbers are from 2007. Um, most of the figures that I'm going to talk about come from the American Cancer Society book, Facts and Figures. That they publish every year. The American Cancer Society publishes um, a book, Facts and Figures, of all the numbers of cancers um, and all the different breakdowns you could ever want. And it's a PDF available on the web uh, to everybody. Five-year relative survival rates for all cancers diagnosed between 99 and 2006 is about 68%. It's about from, up from about 50% um, from 1975 to 1977, primarily due to a stronger push for early detection and improve, some improved treatment strategies. So this is from the American Cancer Society Facts and Figures book. <clears throat> You'll see um, bladder cancer numbers in the urinary system compared to other uh, cancers uh, of other t types. So if you'll see urinary bladder, about 70,000 cases, right? In the urinary system, about 132,000 cases in general. <clears throat> that also includes kidney, renal pelvis, and ureter and other. But about 70,000 cases of bladder cancer compared to lung cancers, 220,000. Um, breast cancers, 232 cancer, 232,000, right? So there we are, about 70,000 cases. About 14, 15,000 deaths per year. Um, you'll notice the um, percentages then of death for new cases is higher than, say, deaths for cases of breast cancer, <clears throat> underscoring the importance of what we're talking about today. We want to look at um, bladder cancer um, through decades of life. You'll notice. Um, this is the probability of developing invasive cancers over selected age intervals, um, also from the American Cancer Society. All sites, you'll see 70 and older, 1 in 3, birth to death, 1 in 2 men, 1 in 3 female, <coughs> excuse me, developing all types of cancer. Urinary bladder, you'll see very low incidence, birth to 39. That incidence and the, the probability is increasing as patients get older. Um, underscoring uh, higher risk uh, for development in older patients. 1992 bladder cancer incidence rates have been pretty stable. Um, it's about four times higher in men than in women. This is a disease of older men. This um, was also underscored by Larry just a few minutes ago. Uh, if you look, this is NCI funding in fiscal year 2010. He, his, his graph was prettier than mine. I made mine myself. <clears throat> You'll notice that, um, that um, bladder cancer funding co in compared to breast cancer, colon cancer, colorectal cancer, lung and prostate cancer is very minimal. That underscores the importance of what we're doing today. We're, we're, to a wa we're at a walk for the cure, but eventually we'd like to get to a race for the cure, right? 
That was supposed to be funny. <laughs> okay, thanks. All right, so let's review the anatomy a little bit of uh, the general urinary tract. Remember, your kidneys uh, sit in the abdomen, in the back part of the abdomen, called the retroperitoneum. I presume Dr. Karsh is going to go through this a little bit more. The urologists know this way better than I do. Medical school, uh, anatomy in medical school was quite a while ago, and I'm an internist. You'll, you'll know that internists aren't quite as you know, up on the anatomy as the urologists who see it every day and we're actually looking at it, right? There. Um, anatomy wasn't my favorite subject in medical school anyway. Okay, so kidneys sit in the, in the abdomen, in the um, kind of the back part of the abdomen, the retroperitoneum, connected to the bladder by ureters, right? Bladder stores urine and then voided through the urethra. Look at, let's look at the anatomy of the bladder itself. These pictures right here were pirated from the Beacon Handbook, the Beacon Patient Handbook, which is on the web, which is excellent, um, also available by PDF. I figured that they wouldn't mind if I pirated their own pictures, right? Since I, um, so this is the bladder. Um, you'll notice the um, inset picture. Urothelium is the lining cells of the bladder, and then um, the muscle wall and the fat outside. You're going to see, you're going to see this um, inset picture of the layers of the bladder many times today when we're talking about pathology, we're talking about staging, we're talking about all that different kind of thing. That's going to be important to see that the lining of the bladder, the, lining of the bladder is a muscular organ, really a big ball of muscle, lined by urothelium, that's the, the lining cells of the bladder, and then um, the muscle, which contracts to help you urinate. Let's talk about risk factors for just a minute. Smoking is by far the biggest risk factor for uh, development of bladder cancer. A smoker's risk is about three times that of a non-smoker, right? Causes about 46% of bladder cancer deaths among men and 27% among women. Also, some risk factors, dye, rubber, leather industry exposure. Those workers have a higher incidence of bladder cancer. Interestingly, high levels of arsenic in drinking water also confer a higher uh, incidence uh, risk of bladder cancer, excuse me. So let's talk about diagnosis a little bit. Most common symptom uh, or sign is blood in the urine. That's, we call that hematuria, right? Sometimes it's only microscopic blood. Sometimes it's not actually visible blood. Um, sometimes if you read some of the lay literature on the web, they'll say dark urine, right? Really because sometimes it's hard to, defini to decide what's blood and what's not. But blood in the urine, that's the biggest thing. Sometimes pain, flank pain, sometimes abdominal pain, sometimes pain on voiding, um, sometimes urinary symptoms, hesitancy, uh, frequency, urgency. You can see, though, a lot of these symptoms overlap with benign disease, right? Uh, blood in the urine, very common with stones. Urinary symptoms, very common with urinary tract infections. Um, so because of that overlap and kind of vague symptomatology, um, sometimes that delays the diagnosis uh, of bladder cancer. Sometimes symptoms are only occasionally intermittent. If there's an occasional uh, blood in the urine, I've had a lot of patients who say, I had this blood in my urine, it lasted a day, went away, so I didn't really think about it anymore. Right? Came back a few months later, went away, didn't really think about it anymore. Right? So sometimes only intermittent, sometimes that can delay uh, diagnosis. So a diagnosis of any cancer is always made by a pathologist. We're going to be hearing from Dr. Eisner in just a minute about, um, about the pathology, but any cancer, the diagnosis is made by a pathologist looking at cells under the microscope and saying, these are cancer cells. Okay? So you have to get those cells somehow and give them to the pathologist. Right? Usually with bladder cancer done by cystoscopy with biopsy, that biopsy is then given to the pathologist. pathologist tells us, Urine cytology, sometimes those cells are sloughed off in the urine. So if you collect the urine, we can give the urine to the pathologist. They can spin it, look at it under the microscope, and say, yeah, there was, enough, there was um, cancer cells in that urine. Urine fish testing, you're probably, some of you have probably heard of, of fish testing and had fish, um, fish the test sent on your urine. That's a molecular test looking at the genetics of those cells. Trying to, just, trying to look at chromosome abnormalities. Dr. Eisner's an expert in that, so I'm not going to pretend to know anything more than she does. So let's talk about pathology, and this is going to be a little bit of a, re of a review. You'll get it more in depth in just a minute. Um, 
90% of bladder cancers come from the urothelium. So that's the, that means that the cancer that is grow, the, the cells that are growing out of control to be, uh, that are the cancer are derived from the lining of the bladder, the urothelium. Okay? Sometimes it's also called transitional cell um, cancers. Other types that can come are small cell. That's a pathology term. Let's just make fun of pathologists for just a second. Small cells because when they look at it in the microscope, they look small. That's why they called it small cell. I guess we could have a more imaginative name, right? You know, in lung cancer, they look at them under the microscope and they call them small cells, but if they're not small, you know what they call them? Non-small cell lung cancer. <laughs> um, okay, so you can also have an adenocarcinoma that's derived from different cells of the bladder um, or a squamous cell, which is a, a different, but the vast majority are derived from the urothelium, the lining cells of the bladder. Okay? The pathologist will also give us a grade. How, how malignant, how angry these cells look, right? And the pathologist, perhaps most important, which we're going to talk about, is whether the pathologist is going to tell us whether the cancer invades the muscle or doesn't invade the muscle. Right? That's a clinically important uh, feature of the pathology. Does it invade or does it not invade the muscle? Let's talk about the layers of the, bl of the, the bladder. When we're staging a cancer, we're going to look at a few different things. We're going to look at how deep it goes into the bladder. We're going to look at the lymph nodes. We're going to look at whether there's distant spread of the cancer. So in order to tell us how deep it goes, they're going to say T something. T1, 2, 3, right? Or T4, depending on how deep through the bladder it goes. This is also from the Beacon Patient Handbook. Um, so if it's just right, right on the top, carcinoma in situ. That's what CIS means. TA, just very superficial, T1 into the first layer, T2 into the muscle, T3 through the muscle, okay? So that is the first step in staging is how deep the cancer goes into the bladder wall, okay? So staging is going to determine the extent of the disease. Once we have a diagnosis, the pathologist has looked under the microscope and said, yes, this is a cancer, this is a cancer, this is what kind of cancer it is, we have to determine how ex the extent of the disease, how... How advanced is this cancer? First thing we look at is how deep into the muscle, deep into the, the bladder it is, just like we said. Okay, that's the T. We can use lots of other modalities to tell us uh, the rest of the staging. Primarily, um, the definitive staging is done by some kind of imaging study, right? A CT scan, a uh, bone scan to look at bone disease, a PET scan, um, which is where some radioactive sugar is injected in the vein, and then Cells that are really active will take up that sugar preferentially. They'll take it up more than the cells all around it, and then we can do a scan, and those, the really active tissue will light up on a PET scan. Okay? So like I said, we're going to use information from the primary tumor, the lymph nodes, and then whether and how extensive the disease is, whether there's distant spread. Right? And that will give us a stage of the cancer. Clinically important in staging cancer is whether there is muscle invasion or non-muscle invasion. In fact, it's so clinically important that there's two different talks today about how to deal with it. There's a talk about non-muscle invasive, how to deal with non-muscle invasive, muscle invasive cancer. There's a talk about dealing with muscle invasive cancer today. So here you go. There's a stage, and, and it breaks, breaks down the T, that's how deep it is, the N, that's the lymph node status, and the M, that's the distant spread, right? So you can have a T1 to 4. You can have an N1 to 3 or an M0, that means no distant spread. You can have an M1, that means distant spread. Is that making sense so far? So if you look at the breakdown, so if you have a T2, right, into the muscle but not through the muscle, no lymph nodes, that's a stage 2 bladder cancer. Conversely, if you have T4, that's through, through the bladder into the stage, into the area right around the bladder, invading structures around the bladder, no lymph nodes, no distant spread, that's considered a stage four bladder cancer. Is that making sense? So let's talk about bladder cancer recurrence. As Larry alluded to earlier, bladder cancer has one of the highest recurrence rates. He said 50 to 75 percent. In this paper here, one of these, these two papers here quoted 70 to 80 percent will have um, recurrence. Remember that's talking about all, all comers in bladder cancer, even very superficial um, Bladder cancers, that underscores the importance of follow-up and follow-up with the urologist. And the urologist is always wanting to take a look in there with the scope, right? Um, factors predicting recurrence, tumor size, bigger, bigger tumors have a higher, in, uh, higher risk. Multifocal, is it in more than spot, more than one spot? How many spots is it in? Larger number of tumors, 
Uh, higher tumor grade, remember the grade is how aggressive, how malignant the cells look. Uh, an advanced stage in the presence of carcinoma in situ. In summary, about 70% of 70,000, I'm sorry, 70,000 cases of bladder cancer, about 14 to 15,000 deaths every year. Smoking is the biggest risk factor. Staging depends on the depth, the lymph nodes, and distance spread. And risk of recurrence is high with bladder cancer, which underscores the importance of follow-up uh, with urology uh, and regular follow-up and lifestyle changes such as smoking cessation as well. I think that's all we have today for Bladder Cancer 101.